hello and welcome to the CAD tutorial channel. Today we're going to use Autodesk Inventor to create a FEA study of a stress concentrator. Our main focus today will be looking at meshes and convergence and try and find the best uh, strategy for handling those. So the modeling won't take us very long. Um, before I get started with that, i uh, remind you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. We'll be putting more of these videos up there uh, using a variety of different CAD software. And uh, if you have some ideas for our next video, please leave it in the comments uh, below. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create a sketch on the front plane. We're going to create a rectangle. And we're going to use a, a two inch by four inch piece of plate stock for the stress concentrator. So we'll make it two inches tall, four inches wide, and we'll drop a hole in the middle of one inch. That's pretty much our modeling. We'll go ahead and extrude that out a quarter of an inch. Okay. And then we'll finally, in Autodesk Regular Inventor, we'll apply material. And today we'll use Steel Mild for our study. From here, we'd save it off. And then we'll go ahead and move on over to Environment uh, Stress Analysis. And once we're here, our first thing is to create a study. And we can leave all this set to the defaults. Uh, we're not doing anything that sophisticated. Um, so the defaults will work just fine. All right. And we don't really need to worry about assigning material because we already did that. So we'll go ahead and fix this side. And then we'll place a load a pulling load over on this face. So we'll put a force on this face and uh, we'll flip the direction. So it's pulling and we'll make it uh, 500 pounds. Okay. That's it for the setup. So we'll go ahead and mesh the view. So this will be the standard mesh using the standard mesh settings. What I want to take a note of is we have about 740 nodes and about 328 elements. And these are the triangles that are making up our mesh so that it can do the calculations. And we'll go ahead and run the simulation. Okay, so at this point, we're looking at about four point. One five, we can see the coloring where it should be, which is right on the edge of the arc. I want to make sure that we're not getting any major color changes right on one of these lines. That would indicate that we're not getting great results. But there certainly is some refinement we can get on this. Our first method on refinement is we can come into the mesh settings up here and change them globally. Right now we're set to a percentage of 0.1. I can go ahead and change that percentage and we'll just split it in half to 0 0.05 uh, and click OK. So that's about 5% increase. We'll remesh the view. You can see the little lightning bolt over here. So we'll just update the mesh. And you can see we went from about 700 uh, nodes to about 3,500. So we added quite a bit of more calculations in here with just making that minor change to our global mesh settings. We'll go ahead and run the sim. And here we are, have increased our values slightly to about 4.3 nine so i record that value for our max it is occurring where we anticipated it to incur so that's good um what we can do at this point with this strategy is i'm going to record that value of 
one. And we'll go ahead and change our global mesh settings to half of that value, so 0 0.025. Okay, we'll remesh it. So we went from 3,500 to 20,000 for our nodes. So quite a significant increase. And then we can simulate it out again. And we should see a slight difference. We went from 4391 to 4.38. So this is one way to look for some refinement and see how tight we can get these numbers to get. And I'd say we have achieved that. We probably have overmeshed this at this point in time. So that's the first strategy, using it uh, by hand to accomplish this. All right, let's go ahead and look at a different strategy. So I'm going to create a new study. And we'll set it up exactly the same way. So we'll fix this edge. I could have copied these settings too, but there's not very many to do, so it'll only take a second. 500 pound load, okay. And we'll go ahead and mesh it and run it. This should get us back to where we were in our first study with the value of 4.1, 5.2. Okay. So this time we're going to use convergence to help us get to the right result. Now convergence is where it's going to try and figure out a better mesh strategy for us. But we have a little bit of setup for that. If I come to my convergence settings right here, by default it's set to 0, 10%, and 0.75. What I'm going to say here is I'm going to have it run five studies of refinements of my H. I'm going to change my stop criteria so it can stop by either running five studies and seeing if we get convergence or by hitting a threshold of change between runs. So I'm going to drop that to 5%. And then my refinements can be a value of anywhere from 0 to 1%. This is the change of uh, nodes, or um, excuse me, of uh, elements that it's going to change per run. So we're, we're basically going to change 25% of them with each run. And it'll try and figure out where it should do that. Now in this particular model, we have very little or nothing happening out here on the edges. All of our change is going to be where we anticipated in the stress concentrator right along the arcs where we are concentrating that 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 strain on the on the piece so let's go ahead and give this a try with five runs with a five percent change and we will then run the simulation it'll take a little bit longer because it's doing a few extra runs at it notice that our nodes and our elements changed for this, and notice that our value is at 4.389. When we did our smallest mesh size, we were at 4.38. So our value is very close, and we have much fewer nodes and elements. So in a much larger model, this is a little better approach for us, quicker approach to get to where we need. So it kept our nodes and elements much larger where they weren't needed. But up in this area where our load is concentrated, it added more nodes and elements in those locations for us. I can go ahead and look at our results on our convergence right up here. It's going to pop up a graph. And you can see on the first study to the second study, we had a significant change from the second study to the third study we still had a pretty good change and then from three to four and four to five we started to level out our convergence rate was all the way down to less than one percent real tight so this is a perfect result that we would be looking for with not a whole lot of work from there i can go ahead and uh, add some 
max and minimum values. And it'll show us where our max values are occurring and our minimum values. Minimum is going to be everywhere out in these spaces. And our max is occurring right where we would anticipate it to be at. So that worked out really great for us. All right, let's. So this is my preferred method: is using convergence to do that, and using the values on your convergence settings of about five runs and about a five percent stop criteria are pretty good values as a starting point. You can make further refinements and tighten those up depending on the sophistication of your model, but this is a good starting point for you. One last method that we can do is a local mesh. All right, so let's start a new study and we'll use the defaults. And again, we'll set up our fixed side. We always need something that is fixed. And we'll put our load over on the other side again. And we'll use 500 pounds pulling. Okay. Oh boy, okay. From here, we'll just use the default mesh. And we're at about the same values we've seen in the last two studies. We'll simulate that out. And again, we have a value around 4.152, so nothing's changed. But what we can do at this point is this little button right here, which is our local mesh control. Now, we know that our concentrated load on this problem is in this area. And again, we have out here in the field very little happening that we're overly concerned with. So what I could do is I could put, pick these edges or I could pick this face and set my element size to 0.1. And we'll go ahead and update our mesh. And we'll go from 740 to 3200. Notice that our mesh tightened up right in the area. Notice the arc has become much more uh, cylindrical in nature rather than ridge uh, uh, straight lined edge there. So we have a, a better arc representation. Let's see what our results will do with the local mesh. Yeah, so we'll simulate this out and run it one time. And we're coming in at about 4.378, 4.378. So in our convergence study, we were 4381, and here we're at 4378 on our first run. So that's a pretty good value by just using a local mesh. So in this case, we have two different strategies. Now, one thing that we can do is we can use a local mesh and a convergence all in the same study. So here we have our broad mesh, very uh, loose. Then we brought in a local mesh around here to tighten it up. And then we'll go ahead and use a convergence settings and set that to 5. And stop value of 5% again and click OK. Now this will be a little larger mesh than the last time we did this. But our results should be about the same. So we're coming in at 4378, same value. Let's see where our conversion chart is. So in this case, our second to third run didn't take us as many runs this time to get us to a convergence factor. So these results are pretty good in both our second and third example uh, for this. And hopefully this was a helpful video for you and some basics and finite element analysis and using uh, mesh and convergence settings uh, with your models. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. 
Uh, more exciting videos will be coming in short order. And if you have an idea for our next video, please leave a comment below and we'll be more than happy to do that. Thank you and good luck.